Hello everyone. Good evening. In this video, we will be trying to understand a very important topic from coordination compound that is labile and inert complexes. In this video, we will be talking about its definition, examples and problems related to it and their best possible explanations. So, first of all, let us first try to understand what is lability and inertness. According to the definition of labile complex and inert complex, labile complexes are those complex which permits the exchange of the ligand, one or more ligand, from their coordination sphere by other ligand. So if a particular complex allows the exchange of one or more of its ligand by some other ligand, then such complexes are called labile complex. While inert complexes are those which either do not permit the exchange or which allows the exchange but very slowly. So if the exchange of the ligand in a particular complex is very slow or it may not take place, so such complexes are called inert complexes. Let us try to understand through a particular definition uh, example. HgCN42- is thermodynamically very stable. Okay, it's a very stable complex but this particular complex can easily exchange its cyanide ligand or cyanoligand. So remember that when we say a particular compound is stable we didn't or it does not mean that it is inert. Inertness and stability are two different uh, terms or two different uh, topics. Okay, When we talk about stability stay, a particular compound may be thermodynamically very stable but when we try to exchange its ligand, when we try to react it, it may be very much easy to uh, exchange the ligands in that particular complex and that is what happens in cyanide or HgCN4 2 minus. In such cases, the cyanide ligands will be very easily exchanged and that we can see in the equation where they have exchanged that Cn minus ligand with a labeled carbon 14 cyanide. We are labeling it with carbon-14 since it is a radioactive isotope and can be used as tracer to trace whether the cyanide or the substitution has taken place or not. So if you can see the reaction, the substitution does take place and later on once the substitution is completed, we can know since it is a radioactive isotope that whether the complex contains that carbon-14 iso uh, isotope or not. So that that is the way how we can say that the exchange is possible or not. Thus the stability of the complex does not ensure its inertness. So when we say a particular complex is stable that does not mean it is inert. It may not be inert. It may be labile. On the other hand CONH363 plus which is very thermodynamically unstable but if you keep this particular solution in acidic medium then it can remain as it is and cannot or will not undergo any change maybe for weeks also okay now what does that mean that means a compound can be or a complex can be unstable but that does not mean that it will react very fast or it will be labile or it will exchange its ligand it may not do that thus the complex is unstable but inert in acidic solution okay so that is how we can understand the concept of lability and inertness now there are two basic approach to explain the lability and inertness. So we'll be trying to understand the lability and inertness of octahedral complexes. And the first approach is through valence bond theory. Now there are a few points which we need to understand before going into the understanding of valence bond theory. And two important points are, according to valence bond theory, all outer orbital complexes would be labile and inner orbital complexes would be inert if substitution proceeds through SN1. Okay. And the second one is the inner orbital complex would prefer to follow an associative SN2 mechanism. Now, before going into the things, before we try to understand, I hope everyone understand what is an outer orbital complex and what is an inner orbital complex. Now, octahedral basically or whenever a complex form octahedral, there are two kinds of hybridization possible. One is sp3d2, another one is d2sp3. If it is d2sp3, 
then the d orbital which is used for hybridization is the inner d orbital that is n minus 1 d orbital and when we talk about sp3 d2 the orbital which is used for hybridization is the outer d orbital which we call as n d orbital now always try to understand when we talk about sp3 d2 and d2 sp3 outer or inner orbital complex in case of inner orbital complex since lower energy d orbital are used n minus 1 the lower energy d orbital hence the energy involved in such formations or such hybridization will be less and in case of sp3 d2 since higher energy orbitals are used the n d orbitals the outer d orbital hence the energy involved will be high now According to valence bond theory, transition metal complexes undergoing substitution reaction through dissociative SN1 mechanism. Now, those who are not able to understand what is dissociative SN1 mechanism, uh, it would be preferable for them to watch the previous video, uh, which is on the SN1 and SN2 mechanism, so that they can understand better that what is SN1 mechanism or why we are calling it dissociative SN1 mechanism. So, according to this particular uh, valence bond theory, complexes which undergoes dissociative SN1 mechanism would be labile. Okay? So, if it undergoes SN1 mechanism, it would be labile if the bond holding the ligand with the central metal atom are comparatively weak. And if the inert or it would be inert if such bonds are comparatively strong. And that we can understand. The dissociative mechanism the bond must actually break now in such cases if the bond is strong what will happen obviously the tendency to dissociate will be easy when the tendency to dissociate will be easily or easy it would be level and if the bond will be strong obviously it will not prefer to break if it will not prefer to break then what will happen obviously the tendency to break will be very difficult and as a result the complexes would be inert and that is what actually I have told you. So if it involves ND orbitals, the outer orbital, the energy involved is high. When the energy involved is high, then the bond length will also or the bond energy will also be weak okay, or will be less. When the metal ligand bond is util or the metal ligand bond which we are talking about utilizing the hybrid orbital containing contribution from the outer orbital then the energy or the system or the bond would be very less stable or it will be very or it in comparison with the n minus 1 it would be less stable so if it would be less stable then it will break easily so if a system has or if a octahedral complex undergoing sn1 dissociative mechanism has a nd orbital involved in hybridization that is outer orbital complexes then usually it's a high energy orbital high energy means the bond energy or the bond which is formed between the metal and ligand would be less stable as a result of which it would be less stable and will break very easily and as a result of which it would be labile in case of out inner d orbital since the energy is less so when the energy is less the system the metal ligand bond would be more stable when it would be more stable then the complex or the bond breaking process would be not that much uh, facile compared to the n d orbital or the outer orbital complex so inner orbital complex would be preferred to be inert compared to the outer d orbital so that is how we can understand now if the inner orbital complexes do not prefer to dissociate then obviously they will prefer to associate and that is why the second point is mentioned in the video that this inner orbital complex would prefer to associate rather than dissociate because the bond formed by the inner orbital complex would be strong the metal ligand bond in the inner orbital complex would be stronger so they will always prefer to form an associative SN2 mechanism so that is how we can understand according to valence bond theory now there is explanation from the crystal field theory as well so according to crystal field theory 
the concept of liability and inertness is whether an octahedral complex reacts by SN1 dissociation or SN2 association mechanism, all symmetry is lowered and a decrease in CFSE. What do we mean by CFSE is crystal field stabilization energy usually occur in going from octahedral to five coordinated square pyramidal activated intermediate or from octahedral to seven coordinated pentagonal bipyramidal transition state that is what we have learned in our previous videos so those who are not able to understand that how actually an octahedral goes to five coordinated square pyramidal activated intermediate or to seven coordinated pentagonal bipyramidal transition state so do watch the previous videos to understand that better and then come to this video so that you will understand it in a much better way. Now what they are saying according to crystal field theory is whenever there is a change from a particular octahedral complex whether it is SN1 or SN2 mechanism when it goes for either a square pyramidal activated intermediate or a pentagonal bipyramidal transition state it will always prefer to lower its CFSE value. The octahedral complex is formed by the ions for which there is a large loss in CFSE. So if there are some metal ions which prefer to form octahedral complex and once it forms there is a large loss in CFSE are least labile. We know that they will be more stable. If they will be more stable they will be least labile and such complexes are inert. Okay, so according to CFSE, if a complex which is formed or if an ion forms a octahedral complex and in the result of the formation of the octahedral complex, there is a large loss in CFSE value, then the complex would be labile. On the other hand, if it happens that the metal ion which forms or which forms an octahedral complex has a very less loss in CFSE or no loss in CFSE are very labile. There is a particular example for that like uh, both high spin and low spin octahedral complex of D0, D1 and D2 will react rapidly that is they are labile complexes. Since there is loss or there, lo there is a loss of CFSE for this ion by either mechanism. So if you take try to take any uh, ions of D0, D1 or D2 configuration whether high spin or low spin and if it is an octahedral complex this complexes are very labile. Why they are very labile? Because there is a loss of CFSE when this type of complexes forms by either mechanism. Okay, so that is how we can understand the lability and inertness from the valence bond theory approach as well as the crystal field theory approach. Now, let us try to take uh, one problem so that we understand the uh, topic better. So, this particular question gives us two equation one is of CO NH363 plus which is reacting in acidic medium to give you CO H2O6 3 plus. So basically the water is water as a ligand or aqua as a ligand is replacing the amine and the same thing is happening in the second reaction and the first the product are favored in above reaction. So the first reaction favors the product. In the second reaction CO NH362 plus 6H3O plus gives you COH2O62 plus. Again, it is replacement and it was found out that the reaction 2 takes place with H2O in a matter of seconds. So it is very, very fast. The second reaction compared to the first reaction is very, very fast reaction. Now, according or with respect to those two examples or two uh, equations, some questions are framed. So let us try to see. Select the correct statement. CONH363 plus is thermodynamically and kinetically stable relative to the other. CONH363 plus is thermodynamically unstable but kinetically stable relative to the other. CONH363 plus is thermodynamically and kinetically unstable relative to the other. And CONH363 plus is thermodynamically stable and kinetically unstable relative to the other. Now, if you see the things which are given, option B would fit correctly. CONH36 is thermodynamically unstable but kinetically stable relative to COH2O63+.
okay so if you try to understand that co n s 3 6 3 plus is thermodynamically unstable so if you go back into the co n s 3 6 3 plus is thermodynamically unstable that particular complex we have discussed in the example also the reaction one reactant will be unstable okay because what we have discussed in the example in the previous sections also that this particular complex is thermodynamically unstable but kinetically stable you can clearly see if you see the first reaction and the second reaction the first reaction will be preferred preferable compared to the sorry second reaction will be preferable compared to the first the second reaction takes place in a matter of seconds okay so that is what they have discussed co h2 o6 kinetically stable relative to co h2 o6 6 okay so if you see co nh36 3 plus gives 6 h3 o plus gives you co h2 o6 3 plus so if you compare in the first reaction co nh36 3 plus has very less tendency to go towards co h2 o6 3 plus which means that kinetically co nh36 3 plus is stable but thermodynamically it is not stable what we have learned in the previous example so if you don't understand that you can just go back to the previous example and watch it again okay co n s 3 6 3 plus is kind uh, thermodynamically unstable so let us move into the next which is true in terms of delta g naught okay so options are given the correct option will be the option b where delta g naught of first delta g naught 1 that means of first reaction is less negative than that of delta of 2 i hope you can understand that whenever we talk about spontaneity wherever whenever we talk about liability whenever we talk about a particular complex can uh, or a particular reaction is spontaneous or not we talk about gibbs free energy and we know that higher negative value the gibbs free energy has the spontaneous the process is so if you compare reaction one and two reaction two takes place in a matter of seconds whereas although the product is favored in reaction one also but it is very uh, less spontaneous compared to equation two so equation two has a higher value than equation one that is what actually is option b let us move into the third which is thermodynamically unstable and also kinetically Lebai. So, if you try to see that will be option D, CO NH36 2 plus. It is thermodynamically unstable also and kinetically labile also. If I go back to the particular example, this one, the reaction 2, you can see CO NH36 2 plus, okay, it is kinetically labile also and that particular complex is not stable also. Thermodynamically also, it is not stable. So, that is option d okay so that is how we solve some problems based on liability and inertness so that is all about the labile and inert complexes so do watch the other videos for more discussion on the topics in coordination compounds thank you everyone